Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, first, I'll go over a little primer about the ghost events and how it works with ghost and how we extended it to do uh, all BPF only scheduling. Uh, so, uh, so, as a reminder, uh, 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 we talked from last year at LPC, is the uh, ghost is a kernel scheduling class that's uh, below CFS and priority control. Our kernel decisions, our scheduling decisions are made in the user space by an agent process. The uh, kernel sends messages to the agent, uh, such as task text, text box on CPU 6, and uh, the agent issues transactions to the kernel, such as run task X on CPU 12. Sorry about that. Can y'all hear me now? I think I was muted. Okay. About now. Okay, I think I saw a hand wave in the audience. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so the kernel, the kernel's in blue. That's where our scheduling class is. And uh, the messages go from the kernel to the agent, and that transactions come from the agent back to the kernel. Uh, overall, the Ghost uh, motto is to do no harm. Using Ghost should not hurt the operating system, and we want to have our agent faults be isolated. So even during operation, Ghost doesn't hurt the rest of the system. Uh, we, we run below CFS and priority, and uh, CFS pre will preempt Ghost tasks is what that means. This also includes kernel threads. We're not going to schedule those or stop those or anything like that. Uh, similarly, if the agent fails, all of our tasks get moved back to CFS. Uh, and what failure means is configurable and triggerable by user space. So one thing we have, for instance, is if the kernel notices a runnable task doesn't run uh, for X milliseconds, that'll be a failure. Uh, similarly, a user space daemon can notice errors or poor performance, or the application can, and then basically just kill ghost from, uh, from user space. You can also have multiple agents per machine. Uh, the ghost sched class supports distinct independent agents. And uh, we, we have this abstraction called an enclave. It's a set of CPUs scheduled by a single agent. And you can move CPUs between the enclaves. And there's even a, a live update mechanism where you can hand off control of an enclave. Let's talk a little bit how BPF works in Ghost, since this is the BPF track. Uh, the agent attaches processes, uh, or BPF programs. And we think of the BPF as an extension of the agent. It's these red boxes here, still part of the agent. Uh, messages are now the BPF ghost message send, which we refer to just as BPF MSG. And transactions are uh, another program type, SCED PNT, which is pick next task in the uh, scheduler lingo. And uh, here we have the decisions are still made in user space and BPF itself is just kind of hooking into the the messaging and the transactioning layers. And then this is where we were about a year or so ago. Uh, in a little bit more detail, there, there are specific contexts uh, for both, both of the message types. And, uh, but it, essentially, BPF message is just the message, you know, task six woke up. Uh, and PNT is basically, hey, who runs next? Uh, there's even more detail, we actually have a lot of messages, uh, both messages about tasks and messages about CPUs. So you could actually picture the life cycle of a task through, hey, it was new, it was a block, it woke up, et cetera. Uh, similarly, we have a bunch of things on the, the CPUs, like the, the obvious one is the timer tick, uh, did the timer tick expire or not? And uh, uh, there's other ones related to like the, the operation of Ghost and the agents. And uh, the, the thing that's in interesting about this is that these are the, the message types that are getting sent to, to the agent, uh, but you don't actually have to deliver a message. These are more like a functional API. 
So like the BPF message really is just a giant switch statement that processes each of these. Uh, the BPF programs, we added a few of our helpers, things like wake up our agent. Uh, the, probably the most important one is the second one, which is run the GTID. Uh, that is uh, basically run the next task on the CPU. And we can do things like you know, reschedule a CPU. Uh, it's essentially, it's setting the need resched bit and ultimately and like an IPI and whatnot. I want to emphasize that these programs are part of the agent. They, I think of them as acting as an agent thread with basically the same privileges as the user space agent. And they're embedded in the agent binary, just like with like libvpf applications do. And they have the same lifetime as the agent. They share the memory with the agent as well, in the sense that we use giant M, uh, map type arrays and the M maps are from user space. And I jokingly call this ring B or BPF space because it, it, you know, all of the analogies to x86's ring three. You, know, you have your array maps, our windows into the address space, and uh, you have your helpers or your entry points of the kernel, et cetera. So that was uh, where we were before. And where we're at now is we have our BPF only scheduling where uh, all the scheduling decisions are made in BPF. Uh, and we have user space still has a role, but not in a critical path. So everything in red is still the agent, but now the decision is actually made in BPF itself. Uh, and the agent communicates with a BPF maps, both to user space agents, as well as to the application itself. And uh, from the kernel's perspective, nothing has changed. We still have the same interface of messaging and transactions. And why do we want to schedule in BPF? Uh, well, we actually have alternatives with Ghost. One is we could context switch to that CPU's agent task and handle messages and pick next task from user space. Uh, well, the obvious reason is that you know there's no context switches, and uh, you don't you know similarly you don't have to actually kick a task off a CPU to run an agent. Just the, the, the example of a task of waking up, I don't want to have to preempt another task just to tell the agent about you know task six waking up. Uh, from the perspective of a scheduler writer, though, the BPF is synchronous. Uh, this really solves a lot of my heartache. Uh, for instance, what, when I run uh, the BPF message program, we're actually holding the run queue lock. And uh, for pick next task, we're actually in the middle of scheduler pick next task. Uh, one of the things about the user space programming of ghost agents is that you're always acting on old data. There's a message that came for you a while ago, but you're asynchronous, you're not holding any locks. You don't really know what's going on anymore. Um, we have mechanisms to deal with that, but it, it, it's a little bit harder to, to, to worry about and program around. Uh, of course, there are downsides to programming in BPF. It, you know, your limited loops and all, all the other stuff that uh, everyone knows about dealing with the verifier. Um, the other thing is it, it is a little bit harder to do stuff like spawn background threads. Like one of the things we do in our user space agents is just, you know, I just kick off a bunch of CFS threads to do work for me. Uh, it, it's a little bit more convenient in user space. And, uh, and the data structures are somewhat limited to BPF map types. I know there's a lot of new stuff with the, the key pointer and whatnot. Um, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see where that goes. But uh, it, it's still a little bit harder than user space at the, at the, at the current moment. Uh, we talk about BIF, which is our simple BPF only scheduler. And it's basically the world's simplest agent. It's a global uh, FIFO scheduling policy. We have a, just a run queue, which is a BPF map type queue. And here's actually what the er early version looked like. And pick next task, all I did was pop an element and then called the helper to run, run, the, uh, run the next thread. Similarly, I have BPF message send. I mentioned earlier, it's just a giant switch statement. Well, the only messages I cared about were wakeups, preemptions, and yields. And if so, I had a runnable task, stick it onto the queue, and, and exit. Uh, now, the thing is, uh, you want a little bit more than that for any, any scheduler. So you got to have error handling. And uh, I really wanted to have some accounting helpers and stuff like that. Uh, because really, any non-trivial scheduler is going to want to have to track per CPU and per thread data. So the BIF code is more of a policy-less tutorial for how you can track da data and share it with user space and, uh, and a, an application. So we have a few different uh, map types. Uh, the one uh, is a the per CPU data map type is a per, uh, let's see, per CPU, it's a, but it's actually not a per CPU map. It is a giant array that is indexed by CPU. Um, 
the reason for that is I want to be able to unmap it from user space. So I have my map type array. Uh, similarly, we have this thing, the per task data. It's called the SW data field. SW stands for status word, which is a, a ghost thing. But it's basically a dense array of uh, structs. And you can have whatever you want in the structs. I have like, you know, what time did a task wake up? When did it last run? You can put whatever you want in there. And um, the this thing is actually indexed by the status word index, which is a basically it's a densely allocated integer for every task in in the uh, in the ghost system. Uh, and you want want to find your index, so we also have a helper lookup table, which is a you know map type hash. Uh, but essentially, what you have in the end is uh, two mmappable arrays by both user space and by the application. And they have all the info you, you would want for your scheduler, whether it's like the, the per CPU data for a, you know, what's your current task or just your per task data. The other thing is very cool is you can actually pass these file descriptors over a socket to an application so that they can tell us their per workload hints. Uh, here's a couple of examples. Uh, of of uh, actual BIF code. Uh, there's these little helpers that we have thrown in there, stuff like, hey, if a task stopped, what is the basic accounting I would like to do? And it's you know just kind of a simple example of, yeah, you look up the elements, you can set whatever field you want. And similarly, we have a helper to kick a CPU to do to do a resked. But uh, just kind of basic, basic basic C code. And here's actually one of our message handlers. This is how I do the wake up. I've got this. Uh, Dirty no inline and casting games for the for the uh, main function itself. Um, that's just boilerplate that I had to do. You, but as far as what what do you do on a wake up? Well, find your per thread structure, do some accounting, and then stick it into the uh, the FIFO map. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is you'll see a lot of spots here where it's like, well, if I didn't actually have the thread struct, uh, well, then I'd fail to enqueue the task. That would actually be a serious problem because now a task got lost by the uh, by the agent. Uh, one of the things uh, that from the earlier talk, the first talk in the session, we talked about the assertions. This this little get uh, if no SWD that should never happen. I would like to if I could I could replace that with an assertion, and uh, that way if this does fail, it would fail uh, very loudly. Uh, now, I made a comment earlier about having a, a handle wake up no inline. Well, apparently, I get some horrendous error from the verifier about the reference of modified context pointer. Uh, just for reference, what the context looks like is a, a union of a bunch of, uh, of actually of every message type. Uh, and from my end, I needed to trick the compiler to not do something or other with a register, and uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't understand why exactly that happened, but to me, this is one of the sharp edges of working with BPF and the verifier. And uh, I tricked it to make it compile properly, but every so often, little things like that pop up for me. Uh, talk a little bit about our, our future work. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually implement the CFS algorithm in BPF. This is the default Linux scheduler. And uh, there's actually a bunch of reasons to do this. Uh, the first is, uh, is we want, you know, BIF is a stupid scheduler, but is it possible to implement complex scheduling policies in BPF? Uh, or for instance, am I going to run into like weird loop limitations, or do I need new map types that I, I haven't thought of yet? Uh, similarly, uh, what are the changes needed in Ghost? Right now, I've got the pick next task and the message uh, hooks. You know, do I need more more hooks added or a different interface entirely? Uh, from the, uh, the the researcher aspect, there's also the thing I call the ghost tax. Uh, that's the performance overhead of all the ghost mechanisms. If I have the same policy as in kernel CFS. I could do an apples apples comparison to say, well, here's Ghost's performance with CFS, and here's in kernel CFS. That delta should be the cost of uh, of using Ghost. We actually do a CFS in Ghost user space as well, and then then we could see all three. There's like kernel CFS, BPF CFS, and then user space CFS, and get a, a, an accurate measurement of how uh, what is the cost of these uh, of these extensions. Um, other cool things you could do is you could actually tweak CFS uh, if we have our own implementation beyond the existing uh, SysFS settings. And you can even do that for a you know, subset of CPUs or even for, uh, particular applications. Uh, one of the things I was looking at is, you know, we're probably going to need a new map type for a priority queue or heap, uh, for instance, an RB tree. And I, I, I saw um, uh, Dave's work on that, so that that's great. I uh, figured, yeah, you probably couldn't just use the existing BPF map helpers. 
but uh, but the, the the stuff that's going on on that will be will be great for us. Uh, one of the other map types I was thinking of, and I haven't seen anyone doing this yet, but maybe maybe that the bin pointer is that is the thing I'm looking for. Uh, but I was looking for something like a pre-existing memory blob. For instance, uh, all, all the maps I've seen so far were allocated uh, by the kernel. But it, if I wanted to look at a blob of memory that came from somewhere else, you know, whether it's like device memory or something. Um, but yeah, that based on the the, the comments from the previous talk, uh, maybe I can look into the, the dynamic pointer stuff. But ultimately, I just want to treat something like an array map that I know what it is and be able to access it. Uh, a couple of discussion points. One of the, the things I was wondering about is, that, you know, Ghost itself has its uh, own user space ABI for talking to user space agents. And can we implement that purely in BPF? For instance, we have these the status word tables a thing. It's a dense map of thread data. Uh, it's similar to the one that, that, that I create for the BIF scheduler. The, the kernel itself, the Ghost kernel, actually maintains its own table like that. Um, I think that's the, the sort of thing we could replace purely with BPF. Uh, similarly, I mentioned you know, at the very beginning that Ghost works by sending messages from the kernel to the user space. We actually have our own power of two ring buffer, you know, the, the standard thing that uh, that that one would implement. It, they, they are basically very similar to BPF ring buffers plus our wake agent helper. So we could actually replace our messaging infrastructure, uh, at least the user space side of it with BPF. There's a couple things that are a little harder to do uh, in BPF. You know, I mentioned those eight, the agent itself has tasks on every CPU, and those are very special in the kernel. There's like special kernel code for it. Uh, they actually run above CFS, and uh, there's a couple other little things. So I'm not really sure how easily we could replace the whole notion of an agent task uh, with with VPF. Um, one of the other points I want to mention, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that our, our user space agents are asynchronous. Uh, our, the BPF messaging and the, our, the ghost infrastructure we have for that actually can handle that. Uh, and it's because all of our messages have sequence numbers, which are passed back to the kernel whenever you show a transaction. And that this really is the thing that makes sure user space is acting on the current state of a task. Uh, so if we were to replace any of the our ghost uh, user space ABIs, uh, we would basically still need something like the, the, the messaging. Uh, so for instance, if I were to throw away our ghost uh, channels and our status word table and stuff, I would, we would still probably want to keep our uh, sequence numbers and have that be, be something that is passed to BPF even though Ghost BPF doesn't use the sequence numbers too much, uh, it's still something we would want knowing that there's going to be a user space agent, uh, at least the potential for a user space agent out there. And uh, the, other, the other question is uh, that pops up is, is Ghost right for other BPF only scheduling frameworks? Uh, there, are, there are a couple other people we've been chatting with from uh, like Facebook and whatnot uh, who are also interested in having their own BPF only scheduler. Um, and I do think that Ghost probably could implement those other ones, uh, or those other ones could be implemented on top of Ghost. Uh, I want to make a, there's a, a distinction between our SCED class and the user agent uh, ABI. So, like the internals of how Ghost works and hooks into the scheduler can be used for a lot of things, and it just so happens that our user space ABI is just one thing that we've decided to hook into that. Uh, another way to put it is is that that BPF message stuff I mentioned earlier. It's, it's not actually messages that get sent to user space. Uh, it is more of the a API from the kernel calling into, into BPF. Uh, as I said, it's a giant switch statement. Um, and as, as a technical matter, you know, you could have like the dispatcher tables and other stuff, or you have a separate program types for every one of the messages. You know, there's, there's a bunch of things you can do, but the, the main point is that these are the things you can expect to hear from, uh, from the kernel if you're a BPF program. And the thing we were looking to do is extend that to make sure that we have all of the uh, attach points and APIs and, and then up, I guess up calls really that the uh, that other frameworks might need. Uh, for instance, one of the things that Ghost has helped with, at least from from my head, is that uh, I, you still want the BPF messaging interface because Ghost has sort of figured out all of the really horrendous plays corner cases. For instance, uh, the message task we generate in seven different places. And because there's a lot of nuances about when threads change classes, was it on CPU? Was it about the block? You know, there, there's there's a bunch of things that um, and maybe some of those are problems of our own creation, but uh, it 
from the perspective of a scheduler writer, what I want to hear about is just one time when a task wakes up, like when wakes up, and one time to, when when is a, a, a task new happen. I don't want to have to like figure out all those spots on my own. Um, and to some extent, we also think that Ghost solved the issue of uh, safely delegating scheduling to some other agent, whether it's user space or BPF, uh, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, or at least we we are aiming to solve that issue. But uh, um, so yeah, I think other schedulers frameworks could probably be built on top of Ghost uh, relatively easily. Uh, so yeah, so the main points I got is that Ghost is this uh, relatively safe, extensible kernel scheduling, whether it's in user space or in BPF space. And you can do just purely BPF scheduling. Uh, you can also do user space scheduling. You can do a hybrid scheduler, all sorts of stuff. And we've got the, an example of a scheduler called BIF. It's just a very basic policy, but it's sort of an example of how you can make your own scheduler. And there's stuff on the roadmap of like you know, CFS and more advanced schedulers, different map types and stuff like that. Uh, we do have some rough code up on uh, the Ghost kernel and Ghost user space repos on GitHub. Uh, they, it does lag our in-house changes, and uh, sorry about that. And yeah, we also got to use Basel to build the libraries for now. Uh, sorry about that too, but uh, I'll try to get some some other C code out there that can be built with just a make file. And if you have uh, uh, other questions, uh, I have a, a, a long list of frequently asked questions in here. Uh, I'll do just one because I know everybody always asks about what is the BPF task local storage? Uh, that is the uh, task storage get. Um, one thing I want to point out is that in blue, that task struct task pointer, uh, for the most part, Ghost doesn't really have visibility in kernel data structures. Uh, a lot of the BPF, in, in my, from what I've seen, kind of lives on a spectrum of how, are you very close to the kernel or are you closer to user space? And based on, you know, Alexi's talk earlier, it sounds like, you know, the modern BPF is very, very close to the kernel if you're talking about replacing kernel modules and whatnot. Uh, the Ghost BPF is more on the uh, user space side, where I, I think of BPF more of an extension of user space uh, in the way we're using it. So, for instance, so Ghost BPF doesn't have you know visibility in these data structures. We could give them that, but yet we have the compile on to run everywhere. But uh, for the most part, uh, the contexts and everything else that's all ABI structs. Uh, we don't even yeah we don't even use the task pointer for anything. We just have the uh, task ID. And, uh, and finally, uh, as far as I know, task storage isn't accessible to user space. Um, but uh, so that's kind of why we have our own uh, uh, other, other business. Uh, at this point, um, pretty much out of, out of time. So I'll, I'll take a few questions. But if you're curious, the slide deck has uh, many more frequently asked questions, mostly about scheduler internals and stuff like that. But, uh, and I see a question in the chat. And then I guess we could also take questions from the on-site room. Um, I'll, I'll read the first question from the chat. It was uh, from Quentin. Historically, scheduler maintainers have been rather opposed to using modules in the scheduler. What's the plan to overcome that problem with Ghost? Is using BPF going to make it easier or harder compared to a proper kernel module? Um, that's a good question. I think the uh, the plan would be to get together with a couple other groups that are also interested in using BPF scheduling in the scheduler. Uh, let's see, come up with a, probably the union of all the things that, that we need or find like a framework that works for all of our use cases and then see if, if, if we can uh, use that to uh, convince scheduler maintainers that this is worth doing. Um, but uh, so far, I've mostly been talking with uh, larger, large scale companies doing things that are like on, on large scale servers. Like a like, like like Facebook slash Meta and stuff, um, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be also interesting to see if we can get people from the Android community or somebody like that who also have the desire to tweak the scheduler in certain ways. Uh, I think BPF probably would make it easier than a proper kernel module, but um, that's that's always hard. That's always hard to say. But I feel like the 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 safety argument to BPF is something, especially that's part of the, the whole ghost thing too, is that. We want we want to to be able to convince people that this is relatively safe. Uh, I don't think anyone will trust the kernel module, but you know, having the uh, having BPF and like the verifier in, in, our, in our pocket might be might be help might help with the argument. Uh, let's see. I got another question from Brendan. Uh, what is a key example to let's see? What is a key example to explain the need for Ghost? Um, let's see. A primary one is that we have applications that. Uh, 
high value applications that want custom scheduling. And uh, with CFS, a lot of times you'll have, uh, you, even with the nice levels, like the priority settings, it won't necessarily run the, the thread you want at the exact time. Uh, there's, there's a lot of little rules. Like for instance, one that pops up is uh, if a thread gets on CPU, uh, it won't get kicked off for X microseconds. Uh, and then another thread that is behind it may be, may be extremely important to an application, but it won't run at that moment because of that. Uh, we have a, a paper that, uh, let's see, I think it was about a year or two ago now that, that goes, goes into more details on some of this stuff and has some, um, uh, some various workloads where, where we work on, uh, let's see, I think we did a, a, like a deadline scheduler in user space. So when when a, when a, when when a thread woke up, we could get on to CPU quicker, and you know, it, typically you'll, you'll do things like uh, tail latency is a big one, um, stuff like that. Uh, let's see. So those are the questions I had from the chat. I don't know if there's any questions in the room. You, your room is muted too, which I think was to help prevent the feedback we were getting early on. So if there's any other questions, uh, take them now. Oh, I can hear you now. Uh, it's a little quiet. Okay, so I was going to ask about the storage the active for all, even though you have it on So you do have map. Sorry, right. I, I heard a little bit there. I was trying to mute myself to avoid getting any feedback from you all. Yeah, sorry, I think you all are muted again. Um, alternatively, if, if someone could type the question in, that, that, that might help. I think we got the solution having that key based in the space. We can directly add the dots to your environment, and then we can update out the solution to take the So, uh, and then we will support the video. I think everybody can have the solution. Uh, uh, the, the other question I have is, so can it just, you, you mentioned that the upstream scheduling layers are, are clear and reluctant. So is this source going to be a shared class in itself, and then what is the class of upstream that shared class? Are we, uh, are we in engagement with the scheduling layers? And so the UPS side is mostly, mostly it's dependent on that shared class. Sorry, this is a little frustrating. I'm having a hard time understanding. Yeah. So we have to, uh, Barrett, we have to, to either talk here or you talking. So now, now we'll mute and you talk. Okay. Um, I could hear you very clearly when you said something right there, but I could not hear the, the question very clearly. I'll mute now. So, uh, Barrett, uh, the the question is that this ghost, it, 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 uh, the predicate for any ghost uh, support in the upstream kernel is dependent on that shed class that needs to exist there. 
So is there any plan to upstream that shared class uh, so that there can be some BPF based extensions to that? How far those conversations are? And are, are we are we discussing them at plumbers here? Uh, let's see. So yeah, definitely agree. We need to have some SCED class, whether that's Ghost or one of the other ones that are out there. Um, it's not, not gone very far. Uh, we do have open source code, but not upstreamed code. And uh, I think there are a couple of people floating around plumbers talking. I, I, I've heard that Peter Z isn't physically there. Uh, so that uh, I'm also physically not there. So that's, uh, we do have a couple other uh, people from the ghost team and from Google uh, around there. But yeah, part of the reason I want to give this talk was to get you know people aware of the stuff that we're doing so that uh, you know those talks can go on either at LPC or, or offline um, or you know on, on mailing lists and whatnot. But yeah, definitely agree. We need to have something in the kernel already to, to hook it in. And the thing we want to do is make sure that whatever goes in works for not only us, but for whoever else has similar uh, similar needs for their application. For instance, you know, I had those lists of all the message types we have, we, we've been dealing with. Uh, maybe there's different messages that other people need, or maybe we've got too much crap and we need to cut it out. But good question, so, thanks. The question for the room is that, can we do a boff for scheduler? So there is there is scheduler interest from like, uh, from meta folks as well, from Google. And we should be talking to scheduler folks, uh, the scheduler maintainers as to what their requirements are. Otherwise, this will always remain in like, as a user space, something separate from the scheduler stuff. Uh, Alexei, Daniel, what do you think towards the? Oh, you can't. Okay. Okay, I'll mute this, and then I will talk.